This uh, uh, series of production that we are doing here is going to be in three parts. The first one being the introductory part, a case study at the Nyaga seat, uh, Pigang. And then you are also going to look forward to, 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 to get um, the third part, which is going to look at the uh, bow and sow management as well as uh, piglet management. Once uh, your pig, your, your, your sow is uh, furrowed, you need someone to make sure that is actually re uh, removing the sows and put them in the inner nursery where there is a source of heat. Some they use infrared lights, some they use uh, charcoal, some they use what they call baura to try and make sure that the, the, farrowing, uh, the farrowing house or the maternity house have got a temperature which is around 30 degrees. 34 degrees for the piglets. For the sow, of course, it requires around 24 degrees. Uh, that's that's where it has got its thermal comfort zone. So what you have to make sure to do, what you have to do is to make sure that within the farrowing um, pen, you have got your nursery uh, part where you can actually put your your piglets and uh, your source of heat, so they can actually uh, survive cold temperatures. Then you need, you need to make sure that within um, our, within a few minutes after after parturition. Uh, being born, you need to make sure that you lower the, you reduce the umbilical cord by clipping the umbilical cord to about um, less than uh, five centimeters, uh, so that then you dip it in iodine solution, so that you uh, you also lower the chances of entrance of other pathogens that can actually cause problems in your in your in your in your, in your pigs. Then you also need to make sure that within uh, that 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 period, you can also be able to weigh your piglets and allow them to suckle. Um, uh, uh, cholesterol, which is the first milk of the sow, which is very critical in terms of um, antibodies, in terms of um, um, uh, energy, in terms of uh, a lot of other uh, important uh, nutrients that are required for the survival of your piglets. So piglets that uh, suckle uh, cholesterol uh, within 24 hours of, uh, within uh, four or five hours of giving, of, of being born, they tend to have uh, greater chances of survival. So you need to make sure that your piglets, they also suckle that. You go an extra mile to make sure that also within 70 hours, uh, 72 hours, you have also injected your iodine, so, uh, your iron, which is a very important uh, aspect because pigs, they tend to grow at a very fast rate and they tend to then suffer from uh, um, shortage of red blood cells, which leads to anemia. So you need to, to also uh, lower the chances of uh, suffering from anemic, from becoming anemic by supplying iron. So you need to make sure that those things are done properly. Then your vaccinations, your gills at around 20 weeks, you inject Farosua at around uh, and you repeat after uh, 21 days. Your, your sows and your bows, they are also supposed to be uh, routine vaccinations, uh, routine cleaning with farm guard, routine cleaning with nacaricides uh, to try and treat uh, man manges and other things that can actually uh, affect skin, uh, that can cause uh, skin diseases. So it's very important to make sure that you vaccinate your, your pigs, especially against, against um, parvo virus. So there is a vaccine which is called Farosua, which is very important in terms of lowering chances of uh, having problems like uh, CIMIT, which is still birth, ma embry uh, still birth mummification, embry embryonic death, and, um, uh, and, and infertility. Uh, those are chances, there are high chances that you can have those problems at a pig farm. Then also MMA, which is metritis, mastitis, and agalactia, which is the absence of uh, milk production, as well as inflammation of the, uh, the, the mammary, as well as inflammation of the uterus. So in order to lower those chances, you need to make sure that you, you also uh, vaccinate your, your pigs with farosua, with litter guard, at the, at the recommended um, uh, stages in the life of a sow and a, and a boar as well as uh, a, a guilt. So those are some of the most critical vaccinations that you need to carry, uh, to carry on. Then also uh, deworming, uh, dipping, as well as uh, cleaning the stays 
to make sure that you control menges, jiggers, and other insects that can, other parasites that can actually be vectors in terms of uh, bringing in diseases to your pricker unit. You need to make sure that you don't, you don't venture into this production blindly. You need to make sure that you seek the correct advice, the correct technical advice. Because a lot of farmers, they tend to sometimes overfeed with the wrong feed. It means you are not going to get the returns that you expect. If you are going to feed a wrong feed, it means it's a wastage. When you want to start your pig production, get uh, join organizations that are going to promote your business like you find out that you register with the right pig producers association of zimbabwe get to know other farmers that are available get advice from pig industry board get advice from other farmers get a good have a good relationship with government officials who technical people who can actually be able to give you uh, the correct advice then you also need to make sure that at least your 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 your, your workers you have a chance of getting proper training from organization that offers those trainings. That enables your unit to have uh, the right people with the right attitudes who are going to make sure that your success is guaranteed. So if you want to be successful, definitely you need to make sure that you uh, uh, make uh, a symbiotic relationship with uh, the technical people. We have got that technical knowledge, technical know-how. We can come in and also help and offer you the right advice and actually be able to pinpoint, look at areas that are having problems. The biggest variable cost is your feed. So if your feed is not the right feed, definitely you are not going to see the right results. So if you are not going to see the result, right results, it means you are going to be eating into your pocket instead of actually fattening your pocket. So if you want to fatten your pocket, you have to make sure that you are feeding the right feed, you have chosen, you have chosen the right breed, you have also done a proper market, sur market uh, survey to enable you to actually identify where you can sell your pigs, where you can sell your animals and uh, also be able to, to, to make money out of it. You need to make sure that you also appreciate the value chain system as a whole. To make sure that when your pig is going to be uh, marketed, who is going to be the buyer? From there, who is going to be the process of the meat? So that you actually be also appreciate what they need. You also need to appreciate what your customers need and what they expect out of uh, the pig uh, production unit that you, you are venturing in. If you are going to have the right uh, feed, the right vaccination, the proper hygiene and treatment, treating less, um, less stresses at the farm, definitely you make money for pig production. It's a very uh, remunerating enterprise provided you are taking every step uh, in the right direction. You are following the advices that you get from all the technical people who are in the industry. The general talk must treat in the pig in the pig project, pig project, you know, Dura. It's common knowledge in street with pig pig project, it's well paid, you know, but that. But the talk you know go to an old dura, itangi key and all that. Um but the, having gone through this training, I've discovered that it's actually an issue, it's knowledge gap. Do I point out on a finger you know dura? No wonder why you seek to Mulangotanga project to go for the broilers of, of the poultry project. And it, but the pig gari, one on gauge can be because it's an expensive project. But the Kanauka acquire the right knowledge and the right skills. You'd see it quite motivational. Both along with Angu, it's not just calf. But they think you could see, you know, just calf. One is not that yet, no, it's just two gauges a day. So when you go through training, you will see it, you will marvel at it. It's a good project. Actually, uh, by statistics, uh, my producers are going to meet the national demand, which is covered up in my imports. So I believe a lot has to be done in terms of uh, training my, 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 my farmers, 
per year pick up project. Actually, starting with those that are running the project, could have any knowledge and Varane, Vanya Sukirana, it is a profitable venture. So that it inspires even if I'm a mom, would be or my prospective entrepreneurs, and I've been a bigger in the industry. Market Yenguruwe, Iripo, Isus, we cannot meet the demand. Because iko zvino kangoona pese pano famba pa pariku mwa wa wa pariku itwa michato ma speed ariku ita pese pano gochwa vanhu vane kwachida kugocha poko saka isusu pana apa tino produce ma winners pane vanhu vanotora ma winners atinotozeya kuti pana anobva kukadoma anenge achida 60 pana anobva kugwerwa anenge achida 20 pane product ino zvitengesa yega isusu tingateta outsource kana tatu because we cannot meet the demand Product can I can go the market is there. Isusu Tino specialize and put it in Tino Tinenga Tinema Gills, Tinema So, Atino Tita Shakanaka, Winda Pugufaro in Shakanaka, Two winners Shakanaka. Then Pani Vanongo Tora Ma winner, Vanita Inunzi, winner to finish a program. Vano Yamongo Tora Ma winners, I wait five weeks, per four months. Vaning Vatu Anima Poka Wachin. Saka in Genova Gamchiza, per five weeks. Ivo vachino pezi sa wako saka muno mu industry meduka amudi kutuwe self standard. You must learn to share. You outsource kana ukanzwa kuti ndiruko do mawi na zaka tini ni kana tini hundred pachidu wa hundred and twenty dino no tora kuno mu farmer but farmer yeka ano fani na kuprotecte o zita rangu ano fani ngani good product kuti zifambi rani. Not to kuti kana ndika pamunhu mawinners ango 100 ndikasanganisa nake ake wacho usvika oita marana aiwa chandi uda kungo encourage avanhu kuti product inofanira kunge yakanaka and kunge yakanaka kunge uchipa chikafu chakanaka ma vaccines akanaka dzichigara pakachena the issue of biosecurity is of paramount importance you need to make sure that your pig stays are in a, a enclosed environment where you have got your gut, which uh, you have got um, uh, a good, uh, which have got a food bath, uh, where people they actually have to make sure that they clean their hands. They also clean their, they they, they dip their feet, uh, their feet in the 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 in liquid that, that, that kills some of the pathogens. Then you need to make sure that you have got proper housing that separates the farrowing house from the grower's house, from the, from the breeding house's stays. Why? Because you need to make sure that an individual that who works in the farrowing house does everything there and don't actually move to, from one uh, farrowing house to the other, from uh, breeding uh, pains to the farrowing house because you are likely to be killing pathogens from one side to the next. But when you are talking about the farrowing house, which is your maternity, that's the word where you see sows with uh, young piglets that have been born. So they are still very vulnerable to, to diseases, very vulnerable to any problems that may, any health hazards that can actually uh, be brought uh, by your feet. So if, you're, if, you, if you are going to have your workers at the farm, you need to make sure that workers, they work in different departments. Those in the breeding house, they focus on, uh, 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 they focus on issues to do with um, heat uh, detection. They do whatever they do there and complete their exercise there. Then issues of biosecurity also entails that you should not be able to, you don't allow other farmers with pigs to always come into your pig, into your pig um, facility and roam around because that way you are likely to be also carrying in pathogens and other challenges. So you need to make sure that you limit the number of uh, inflows of people who are getting into your pig stays, like the issues of other, uh, other diseases like um, um, uh, African swine fever, um, which, are, which, are, which are there. They, they tend to have a lot of uh, uh, problems if you, if you are going to allow people to enter your premises without following the right um, procedure, biosecurity procedure. It's actually re uh, removing the sows and put them in the inner nursery where there is a source of heat. Some they use infrared lights, some they use uh, charcoal, 
some they use what they call mbaura. They can actually use them to try and make sure that the the following uh, the following house or the maternity house have got a temperature which is around 30 degrees to 34 degrees for the piglets. For the sow, of course, it requires around 24 degrees. Uh, that's that's where it have got its thermal comfort zone. So what you have to make sure to do, what you have to do is to make sure that within the following um, pen, you have got your 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 your, your nesag, uh, part where you can actually put your your piglets and your source of heat so that you continue to have they, 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 they can actually uh, survive cold temperatures then you need, you need to make sure that within um, our, within a few minutes after after maturation uh, being born you need to make sure that you lower the you reduce the umbilical cord by clipping the umbilical cord to about um, less than uh, five centimeters uh, so that then you dip it in iodine solution so that you uh, you also lower the chances of entrance of other pathogens that can actually cause problems in your in your in your in your, in your pigs then you also need to make sure that within uh, that uh, that that period you can also be able to weigh your piglets and allow them to suckle um, uh, uh, cholesterol which is the first milk of the sow which is very critical in terms of uh, antibodies in terms of um, um, uh, energy in terms of uh, a lot of other uh, important uh, nutrients that are required for the survival of your piglets. So piglets that uh, suckle uh, cholesterol uh, are within 24 hours of uh, within uh, four or five hours of giving of, of being born, they tend to have uh, greater chances of survival. So you need to make sure that your piglets they also suckle that. You go an extra mile to make sure that also within 70 hours, uh, 72 hours you have also injected your iodine, so, uh, your iron, which is a very important uh, aspect because pigs, they tend to grow at a very fast rate and they tend to then suffer from uh, uh, shortage of red blood cells, which leads to anemia. So you need to, to also uh, lower the chances of uh, suffering from anemic, from becoming anemic. Record keeping is uh, very important. You need to make sure that each sow at the farm have got its own record or its own card, which shows its identity, its um, uh, its uh, days it uh, it is likely to be parturating, uh, vaccination that has been uh, done on it, uh, the number of piglets that it has born, those that were born uh, as runs by this sow. This enables you to be able to cow those uh, poor performance and enumerate those uh, good performance. So you would find out that most importantly, most farmers they tend to have records that not that are not up to scratch. They um, they need to make sure that they address the issue of record keeping because record keeping enables you to calculate even the amount of feed that has been given to each sow. If you are doing the weights and weighing your sows. You should be also be able to look at the body condition score and then be able to address issues that are affecting your sows when you have got records because you know the amount of feed the sow is taking in and if it is actually losing if it is losing weight then you can actually be able to tell it could be feed so you can actually easily be able to identify major uh, challenges before they become a problem so you would need to make sure that your records are up to scratch in terms of um, um, uh, the, the, the dates of birth, uh, the growth rate, weekly, monthly growth rate. If you are going to be weighing, then you look at uh, the amount of feed consumed. That enables you to have that appreciation of the cost that you are incurring. So if you don't have good records, you are not a good farmer. You are still not doing the right thing and you will not be able to make money. We are into Pigari. We are about one year now into Pigari, but uh, We've been facing quite a, a, a number of challenges, but with the training, I think I'm now much more motivated and geared to go, because you'll see stock feeds constitute 60 to 70% of the total cost of production in a piggery project. And that has been a, a great challenge for us, uh, to the extent that it was almost threatening uh, to bring the project to a halt. But, uh, Thanks to, to Gogonya Gano, um, 
we have learned how to make stock feeds and that uh, is going it actually is going to reduce i think about our cost of production of stock feed to about with about 50 percent which is quite quite quite, quite good um, we've also learned a lot in terms of the project management record keeping uh, are some of the key issues which we have learned uh, the, the new trends even about the breeds and all that and being a, a project founder and director you know having knowledge into the technical aspects and the whole lot of running the, the, the project is quite key in so far as it enhances your it enhances and broaden your knowledge and perspectives of the project and how to manage it which, which is quite key I think um, this is really a missing dimension when it comes to SMEs, the issue of knowledge impartation uh, on the job training, because the, 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 the training which have been undergoing, uh, I must say what is striking about it is the practical acquisition of knowledge. As much as you learn the theoretical part, but the greater deal uh, is all about the practical skills training, which is quite key, which is very important. And you know, it's different uh, acquiring uh, knowledge and skill from a, an educational institution um, compared to getting it from a, an entrepreneur who is actually going, who is running the project, but also imparting the knowledge uh, to you. The two are different because when you're getting from a, a like-minded entrepreneur who is also running the project, you get the book of capability, uh, the 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 the. the Panica that carry different from an entrepreneur when you get the training and like when you're getting it from an, an educational institution which which is a more bias towards the theoretical uh, aspect or theoretical orientation part of it. Nakatanga ne three ma masau units and in the gun sandam in the training. But in the Jova now for three years. Then I went for training to triple C. When I, I came back, I Dakaita hit the ground running because I was correcting all my mistakes. From there, I've increased my sore head to 83. Kanatatanga Shenguru we kudai tika pindi oma groups. Tino pota tita masai to visits. Tichino funda o. Tichi wana kuti ah. Guru we zewu yoka na tuzi ku shota chika fere. Kana kuti papi pandruno fana ku improve. Pana pandungo ramban chimprove. Dofunga kana maona kuti ndani chita orodu ma challenges angu angari mvura. But hiko jino, tatenge sama winners. Taka manya kuno uti tichitora mvura kudamuriri 110, one, one and a half kilometers away. Kutituane mvura yaka wanda pana. Kuti inyato geza, uti inyato geza matanga edu jakanaka, tichi geza nema hose pipe. Zichimwa mvura ya tinigitaka purifier. Tichi shanti zafuti manyowa acho iwayo kuenda kunaita market garden. Ndakura kizai uko kwa tino da kuita fish. Because fish zino zino feedwa ne china inguruwe. Maona marodra na atina open up waka kura kunge mbuzi. Apana cha unurasa panguruwe. Chibage cha tino rima tichipa panguruwe. Tino chirima ne compost inova panguruwe. Like I said, my name is Dr. Jacob Gusha, an animal scientist and uh, I also wish to promote Zimbabwean farmers to move forward and become productive and make money out of livestock. Livestock is the only way to make money. For example, in drought years, you would find out that we really have droughts for livestock, especially those that do not rely on uh, grains. But you can actually look around and make them survive. Unlike uh, when you are in crop farming, where you need to make sure that you rely on rain and rain alone. So I need you to make sure that you continue following us. We are going to have a number of series that are going to address major issues because we want Zimbabwean farmers to be to make money out of livestock production. Me signing out, Jacob Kusha. <laughs>